happening as well. Um, so welcome back everyone on Moodle, also welcome back people on YouTube. Um, today we will teach you how to create an R package. So the R package that we will create today is named your package name. So and normally you would create a package which has a certain name, like I came up with a new method for fish analysis, which is called fishy f something, right? But in this case, because it's an example, the package is going to be called your package name, which is of course a little bit annoying because I'm making it harder for myself because every time I have to say your package name instead of using a name. Um, and afterwards we will do some more advanced stuff. So I will also teach you how to use things like C code um, and call C code from R um, because a lot of times when you make an R package or when you write code in R, um, you end up with code which is sometimes relatively slow. Um, I also notice now that actually the bottom of the slide is a little bit cut off. Um, so let me move that thing up a little bit. Can I do that using this? Oh, that's going horribly wrong. There it goes. All right, so let's let's make the university proud like let's put the logo in it's it's a little bit too big just all right let's do it like this make it a little bit smaller and then move it a little bit further down again that's the wrong thing that's also the wrong thing all right so let's make the university proud and show the logo as well all right i hope everything is visible and stuff doesn't get cut off on the bottom so today package your package name so First things first, when you want to create your own R package, um, you have to um, install the R compiler, which is different from um, R itself. So you have to install something called R tools, um, and you have to do that only when you are on Windows. So if you are on Windows, you go to this thing, um, and there you can download the latest version of R tools. Um, you have to make sure that the version that you are installing is matching your version of R. Right? Because the version of R that you are using needs to match the version of the R compiler that you are installing. Fortunately, the, the name is generally more or less similar to the R compatibility. Right? So the, the thing that you want to download is the one which is having your version of R in range. So if you're using R 3.0, um, then you need R tools 3.1. If you are using R 3.1, then you need R tools 3.2. And of course, for the latest version of R version 4, there's also an R tools package available. And if you want to create the PDFs, because um, our packages come with documentation, so generally you want to also look if the documentation is generated correctly. Um, for Windows, you also need to install something called MicTex, um, which you can download from here. Um, and this is big. I think MicTex is almost 1.2 gigabytes, the download, and then when you extract it, it's like two gigabytes on your hard drive. Um, you can also install MicTex for Linux because under Linux you also don't have MicTex installed by default. Um, but you don't need R tools when you are using Linux or if you are on Mac OS X. I also don't think that you need it. But I never did package development on Mac OS X so I wouldn't know exactly. Um, but on Windows you need the R compiler and you need MicTex when you want to make sure that the documentation is generated correctly. So, first things first, you need to create a folder on your desktop or on a location that you know, right? So for, for this whole lecture, I will pretend like I made an empty folder on my desktop and this is where I'm going to put the structure in. So our packages are all about structure. Structure is everything. So the structure of the folders inside of this folder that you're going to create, so had the, the create your folder on the desktop. So in my case, because my package is called your package name, I have to make a folder which is called your package name. The name of the folder has to match the name of your package. And the structure, so everything that you put inside of this folder needs to adhere to the official guidelines. And you can click on this link and find the official guidelines. If you click on this link, you will see that the official guidelines is around 600 pages, a PDF file. So there are like 600 pages of guidelines that you have to adhere to. And we're just going to boil it down now to a, to a 50 minute lecture. And I'm going to go through more or less all of it. Um, and then you don't have to read this whole 600 page document. So 
I did that for you, so you don't have to do that. All right, so took of all redeemed. Next slide in Dutch. Good. Mooi, dan kan ik weer eens een keer Nederlands praten. <laughs> zo, het eerste wat we gaan doen is we gaan naar de command line. De, de command prompt, om het zo maar te zeggen, in Windows. Zo, um, so in Windows, uh, hey, als je Windows gebruikt, dan heb je iets wat heet de command prompt. En um, de uh, command prompt is um, advanced stuff, right? So it's, it's erg lastig, want de meeste mensen die Windows gebruiken, die doen point and click. Dus je, je wijst met je muis ergens naar, je dubbelklikt erop en dan doe je dat. Maar hoe start je de command prompt in Windows? Um, nou, heel simpel, je drukt op de Windows toets of je drukt op je start knop voor Windows. Dus in Windows 7 ziet het er ongeveer zo uit. En je, je typt cmd. En als je cmd typt, dan um, heb je één programma wat matcht, cmd.exe. En daar kun je dan op klikken of je, je drukt gewoon op enter op het moment dat het geselecteerd is. All right. I think it's pretty obvious what this slide does. There's not a lot of text on it, so um, it's an easy slide to do in Dutch. Um, but then we're going to execute R from the command line, and executing R from the command line is just pressing the Windows key and then typing CMD. And then one program should come up. It's always installed because it's a Windows default thing, and it's called CMD.exe. And when you click on it, it looks more or less like this. En dan moet ik deze folie in Duits maken. Maar deze folie had gar geen tekst op de auf den folie. So, het is nur dat het zo so uitziet. En dat is schön voor mij, want ik moest nu een klein beetje Duits reden. Um, so, ganz, ganz einfach. I'm, I'm, I'm very so, sorry. Akaubi. Ak, Ak, Ak Um, it's not the best redemption. <laughs> so this slide is just an empty slide. Like it's just showing you how it looks on the Windows 7. Um, but this is something that, that people generally in Windows never touch. Um, man, man in Deutschland fast is gar nicht an. Uh, I, I will redeem your point so you can, you can use the thousand points later on for another slide or in another lecture. So. Um, but I can't do that now. I think my moderator should be able to, but um, I don't have the. I just have the OBS open, so I can't redeem them now. But I will redeem them later on. Um, so this is how it looks. So the first thing that we need to do is check the package. You could translate all text in the screenshot, but it's just English, and it's also German because it already says "alle Rechten vorbehalten." <laughs> Don't worry, I have 5k more points. Micro Weichfenster. <laughs> no, it's not called Micro Weichfenster. <laughs> yeah, and it's C Nutzer, Nutzer 2. That's actually my username on my computer here, but uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you guys should have been earning a lot of points. Like, there's not a lot of things that you can do with channel point redemptions, or at least not, like, if, if you have some ideas what you guys want to do with your channel points, then let me know. But I, I, they're Denny bucks, right? And spend your Denny bucks on something, but I, I don't know exactly what, so. Uh, anyway, micro Weichfenster. No, it's not micro Weichfenster. It's just Microsoft Windows. Um, anyway, so creating your package is just a loop again. So we're going to do the same thing over and over again. And the first thing that we want to do is checking our package, see if the package, so the, the empty folder called your package name that we created is actually a valid one. Um, so in the, in, the, in the command window, we type CD desktop because that's where I made it, right? So I was in C users, user two. Um, <laughs> and then I have to go to the desktop folder. So I just type CD desktop and it goes to the desktop. And then I do this magic command saying R CMD small letters check your package name, which is the name of the folder. And then what will happen? It will look like this, right? So it will tell us, so I, I do CD desktop and then I do R CMD check. And then it says, okay, I'm using this log directory. This is the R version that I'm using. So it's 3.1.0. I'm using a 64 bit windows. I'm using min minimal GNU for Windows to compile. Um, I'm going to compile 64 bits. Um, it's using this um, 
character set, which is ISO 8859, which doesn't really matter. And then it checks to see if there's a file and this file is called your package name slash description. And it says no, right? And that is because everything is about structure. So you need certain files to be there and you need certain folders to be there as well. So apparently there needs to be a file called description. And this is something that is hard under Windows because this description file, this file called description, written all in capital letters, is not allowed to have the TXT extension, right? So the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new empty file called description, right? So I'm going to open up a new, uh, a new text document in, 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 uh, in, in Notepad++, for example. And then when I save it, I have to save it as description. So no .txt at the end, because if there's .txt, then it won't recognize it as a valid description file. So inside the file, we add the following. So we say this is a package, double point, your package name. I'm going to say version, double point, and I'm going to give it a version. And this version is a SEMFER version, which means that it is 0.0.0-1. And you can, of course, make it version 1.3.2-A, um, but it has to adhere to this structure. Um, the date at which it was created, so the first time that I did this lecture was the 9th of June, 2015. I have to give a title, so the title is called My Package. Um, the title is just a sentence, which I can choose freely. Um, the author needs to be mentioned. So the author is me, Danny Arens, um, and my email address between the larger than and smaller than uh, characters. And I need to specify a maintainer. The maintainer is the person who's going to maintain the package long term. And this is the email address that will be mailed. So they will, when, for example, there's an error in your package, and so I submit my package to Kran and there's an error, um, then the people from Kran will start mailing the author and the maintainer. So the maintainer will get an email. If the maintainer doesn't respond, then they are mailing the author. But in this case, it's both the same. I have to specify what my package need, which is called the dependency, and it depends is specifying that. So I'm going to specify that you need to have R installed and you need to have R at least equal to or greater than version 3.0.0, right? So, and this, of course, if you want to write software, um, which is also for older versions of R, then of course you can specify, well, I need to have R 2.8.1, right? But of course, depending on which version of R you are targeting, some functions might be available in the standard library and some might not. So generally, you always target the version that you have installed yourself. So the description um, is just uh, one sentence, um, which is my first R package. And you have to specify a license. And this license you have to choose from a list of approved licenses, which is available um, in the, um, um, which is available on the website. Next lecture in Dutch, I guess. You want to have the whole lecture in Dutch? I don't think that many people will start understanding that. Um, perhaps the Dutch people in, in will, will like it, uh, but I think English is better. Um, but I, I generally go for GPL3. There's different licenses that you can choose from, and this depends on what you want to do with your code, or if there are any restrictions that are there because of the university that you're working for. Some universities only allow you to do things like CC by attribution, um, but in this case, it's just a GPL3 license, which means that you can do anything with it, but if you do anything with it, you have to mention that I, that I made the original package. Um, and if you change something in the package, um, then you have to contribute that back to me. And those are the only two requirements for the license, um, more or less in a GPL. But if you're interested in licenses, we can talk a whole lecture about that. But it's not that interesting here. All right, so again, we do the same thing. So I create this file called description in this folder, and then I'm going to do our CMD check your package name again. And now, of course, it finds this description file here. So it says OK, and then it starts doing all kinds of other checks. And then in the end, we are almost there, but we see that there is one note, right? So there's one note. And it says, packages without R code can be installed without a namespace file, but it is cleaner to add an empty one. So let's do that, right? Because we, we want to have a package that is perfect, 
right? We don't want to have any notes or warnings or these kinds of things. No, we want to have a package which is fully fine. So it says that we have to create a namespace file. So let's create a namespace file. The reason why we need a namespace file is that we might want to load dynamic libraries, right? We might want to load other R packages. Um, or we might want to load like Windows DLLs, or we might want to load DLLs or, or um, SO objects which are available on Linux. So that is the reason why it is there. And it names all the functions that are available to the user. Right, so normally I have to specify a list and own, and so if I make a package, then I have to tell R that this package contains the following functions. And only those functions will be visible to the user, all the other functions will be hidden. Um, so I'm creating a new empty file called namespace. Again, no.txt is allowed at the end. And inside of this file, I add the following, right? Because I don't want to create a package without any R code, but I want to give at least one function to the user. And the function that I'm going to give to the user is called my first package function. Right, so in your case, when you have, for example, some code that does um, Underworld no, thank you for following. Thank you for following Underworld. Um, welcome to the lecture. Um, so in this case, we're just going to give one function to the user of our package, and this is called my first package function. So of course we have to make this function, but first I'm just gonna make the file and I'm going to say, this is the function that I'm going to export. Of course, I now need to create a folder to hold the R code. So I'm going to add a folder called R, capital R, right? So the, the if I look now in the Windows Explorer, then if I go into your uh, my your package name, what what did I call it again? Your package name. So I go into the folder your package name, and now it looks like this, right? So I have a description file, I have a namespace file, and I have an empty folder called R, right? But the folder called R with the capital will contain all the R code files. And I have a very specific structure and this is not required, but normally I have one file, one function. So the, the file has the same name as the function that is in the file. And that is easy because then if there's an error in a certain function, then I can directly open up the file because I'm using one file, one function but it's not required, but it's a good thing to do. So let's create an R code file, right? So in the R, R, in the R, um, in the R folder, I create a new file and this is what I put in. So I of course put in a header, which is very important. I'm going to say the file name. So my first package function dot R, the copyright is by the group that I'm working for, but also by me. It was last modified and it was first written and I'm just gonna make an empty function. So my first package function, and I'm going to say this is a function, it has no input parameters and it does not do anything. And I save it into the R folder. So now we have everything that we kind of need. We have our description file, we have our namespace file, we have our R folder containing the R code, and we have an R file containing a single function that is mentioned in the namespace file, which is going to be given to the user. All right, let's check. So we do RCMD check your package name. Again, it will roll all kinds of diagnostics into the screen, but it says now a warning. Okay, so what is the warning? So the warning says, undocumented code objects. All user level objects in a package should have a documentation entry. See chapter writing our documentation file in the writing our extension manual. So now you have to pick up this 600 page manual, you have to go through it, you have to find this section. But of course, you don't really have to because you're watching the lecture. So we're just going to tell you what you need to do. But this is one of the things which is fundamental in R. Every function inside a package needs to have a documentation. So there needs to be a help file describing what the function does. It needs to give an example and there are some other requirements to the help file. All right, so help files are in a folder which is called MAN, small letters this time. Any other structure won't work. M capitalized and AN small won't work. No, it has to be called MAN. This will hold all the manual files. And again, I normally have one file, one function, 
right? So now this thing head. So I create a new mon file and manuals have the extension .rd. So the way that it looks now on the hard drive is that I have a namespace file, I have my description file, I have my R folder in which there is my first package function .r and I have my manuals and there I have one file called my first package function .rd. So the rd files follow a very a, a structure which is very similar to LaTeX, which is a layout language, um, and this is what you just can copy paste in. Right, so this is the most basic R data file that you can make. Um, so you have to specify the name. In this case, it's called my first package function. You can specify an alias. You, are, you have to specify the name as an alias, but you can give multiple aliases because you don't have to have, uh, you can have multiple names for the same function. You have to specify a title. So my first package function and then you generally do a minus and then a short description so like a four five six word description on what it does and then you have a description field to provide a very long description which can be up to like an a4 of text we then have a usage section which explains how to use the function so in this case the function doesn't have any parameters so the way that you use it is just my first package function open close arguments you have to specify them even though we don't have any arguments I'm just going to say to do add details then we have details and we have to specify the details what does this function do so this function doesn't do anything but I still have to write something here so I'm just going to say to do add details because I'm going to have to fill this in later on when the function does something then I have the value so the slash value contains a description of what the function will return so the return value of the function is described here. Um, but in this case, since it doesn't return anything, I'm just going to say to do add a return value. And then I have the example section and the example section needs to be specified. So the example here, as an example, we execute the function. So since we have no parameters, no return value, I just say my first package function, call it. And then I have to specify keywords. And in this case, this is a method. Right? So it's a function that I'm giving to the user and that is called in R a methods. So it just needs to say keyword methods. And you can't freely choose this, you can only say methods and I think there's like data and a couple of other ones. Um, but in this case, since it's a function, it needs to have the keyword methods. Alright, so we recheck the package right? because we changed something. So we do rcmd check your package name and perfect. So we just created our first R package. It is that easy. It is all about structure. You only have to create four files at the minimum and you just have to make sure that everything kind of lines up. Um, so and step one is learn how to build an R package. Um, then there's a question mark and then there's profit, probably. Of course, we also need to install the package, right? Because we just check the package, which means that it's not yet installed in R. So we can also install the package from the command line. So we can say R CMD install, this time with capital letters, your package name, and then what it will do, it will start installing it, and then it ends with done. And then we have created our first R package. So, ooh, very easy. Just follow the structure. Of course, we need to test it. Right, because we open up R and then we load our library. So we load the library your package name. I call the function, which does nothing, but I have to test or I want to test, make sure that everything works. And then of course, I'm also going to uh, test if the help file works. So I'm going to do question mark, my first package function, and then it will open up the help file. And of course the help file will not have a lot of things in there, but it's just a way. Of course, we can make this much, much better. So any questions? Because that's, that's how you make R packages. So if you just have R code, you just put one function, one file, create a manual file for all of them, fill in the required sections, and then compile your package and, and do this. Good. Then we will do more advanced stuff. So there are some special files that we can provide. So one of the things that we can provide is a package description file. Right, so this, this is the, the general description of the whole package. This file is called mon slash your package name minus package dot rd. 
it is the global package description and it is more or less an index so it's kind of uh, I have had this package contain 17 functions which are related to um, hamster management um, and these are the different functions and if you want to do hamster breeding program function number three you can find it here the other one that you want to have is an internal one because generally there are a certain amount of functions that you give to the user but there are also some functions that you need for yourself which are only used within the package but are generally not available for users so and because all functions need documentations these small internal functions that are not used by the user you can store here you can you can refer to them right so if I have an internal function which the user shouldn't see it still needs a documentation file but I just say that the your package name minus internal has a new alias to the function that I create. So I'm, I'm, we're going to show you. So you're using the alias field for this. So all of the internal functions, when people ask question mark internal function name, then it will go to this um, kind of internal document where it just says that, well, this is a function that is generally not called by the user. So the your package name minus package.rd follows this structure. Right, so this is a, has a keyword which is called package, um, and this is a, a smaller thing. So it's just called uh, the name is your package name minus package. Uh, it has an alias. It has a doc type which is package. So it, it formats it at, as the index page. It has a title. It has a description. It has details, and it has an author and a maintainer section, and that's it. And then it has keywords package, and of course the details can be long as as long as you want. So you put all of the text describing your package there and the description is just a long description of what your package does um, generally like one paragraph and the details are very detailed on which functions are provided and which publications people should cite and these kinds of things the internal one looks like this so hey, if you have internal functions that you use to do your computation but that you don't want the user to call um, then you can link them to here Right, so you say this is the name is your package name minus internal. Um, the title is internal functions, and then we define all of the different functions that we want to link to this file as aliases. So imagine that I have three internal functions: internal function one, two, and three. Then by aliasing this file to all of these three functions, I have one documentation file, and I have three different files in my R folder, and all of these link to this one documentation and the description is generally something like internal functions generally not called by the user um, you do have to specify the author like who wrote the internal functions um, and it has the keyword internal all right so something else that you can do and which is done a lot in our window uh, in our packages is to provide data Right? Because generally if you did some research and you wrote some code, then of course you have data which is used by your code or which functions as a test case. Right, Because you have measured some um, snails and these snails, they, 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 you have your measurement and then you have your code and the code works on these measurements and then you have some output which you kind of computed before. But if you want to give this data set that you generated to the user you can do that in the data folder so the data folder is written with small letters again and data is stored as a name dot r data and here again r is capitalized d is capitalized the other two our other three are small for data files the same thing holds every data file that you provide in r to the user has to have a manual file so again when we create a random matrix dot r data we have to also create a manual or a manual file describing that there is a data set who collected it when it was collected how it is structured and these kinds of things um, for example we can save a random data matrix right so i just make a random matrix um, which is a matrix which contains a thousand random numbers 100 rows 10 columns and I just save it in R using the save function because I need to have a binary R object so I just say save random matrix to the file data slash random matrix dot R data right then we create our manual file describing the data set which is stored in mon slash random matrix dot RD um, so it has a name 
again it has an alias the doc type is data so that R knows that this has to be formatted as a, as a data um, kind of section it has a title it has a description it has a usage section the usage section for data is always data and then the name of the data set then we have to specify the format which describes how the data is formatted like this is a matrix containing 12 rows and 500 columns with measurements on snails um, the details are for example data was collected by me on January 15 2025 uh, and these kinds of things uh, and the reference so the references are references to the data collection so for example your publication where you published your data um, and then of course there's an example and the example for data sets is relatively stupid because it's just the thing which was in the usage section so just data random matrix but again every manual file except for the internal and the package file they need to have an example because that's just the requirement in R um, and of course here we have to use keyword data sets um, so that R knows that this data or that this manual file describes a data set so that it belongs to something in the data fo or the folder all right so besides and because the examples we have to provide because R uses your examples as tests so when you when you do R CMD check your package name it goes through all of the help files and it runs the examples to make sure that there is no error on the examples however we can have more tests and because we might want to have that um, we might want to test certain parameters to our functions that we don't test in the examples so tests go into a folder called tests and generally I use a structure like this so I just say test underscore zero 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 one dot R so create a folder called test and R files in this folder will be executed automatically during the building of the package so when you do R CMD check or when you do R CMD build or you do R CMD install it will run the test to make sure that all tests pass so it gives you more certainty about that I changed a little bit in the code but the output of the test should not differ now right because you can you can imagine that if you have something which computes the mean and then you can test if you take five numbers and you know what the mean is then the test will just calculate the mean using your function and then compare that to the to the overall mean of the test all right so you can add more tests if you wanted to and those go into the test folder or tests folder which um, is also written with small letters so for example uh, how did I do one of the tests so this is a test which fails randomly so I just draw a random number um, which is larger than 0 0.8 and then it will say stop unsuccessful test so this will cause 20% of the, the compiling or the checking of the package to fail because there is a failing test which is of course not a good test but test failure is just calling the stop function right so normally you would say well call my very complex function store the result compare the result to something that I know and if this is not the case then throw a stop error so you can use stop errors to make sure that your test can can fail all right so there's another folder that you can use in our packages and that is SRC so the SRC folder contains source code so it holds for Tron or C code or C++ code that needs to be compiled when you build your package right because R is a language which allows you to also call into C or call into C++ um, so I just want to show you a basic example on how you can do that so in the end if you ever end up in a situation where you have R code which partially depends on C code um, and then you can use the SRC folder to provide that to um, the to the user um, could someone ban the, the spam in chat and that's a request to my moderator though um, right so that's that's perfectly fine uh, all right already banned very good very good thank you moderator right so if I have Fortran code or C or C++ code then I can use that code in R as well um, so I'm just going to give you a very quick basic example on how you can call C code from R 
So first things first, we need to have a C code file, right? So I'm creating a new file, which is called src slash call test C from R dot C. Um, in C++ or in C, uh, comments are not hashtags, but they are um, like double slashes um, or a multi-line comment can be slash star and star slash ends the multi-line comment. So again, of course, I always provide a header and the only thing that this thing is going to do is take two pointers to integers and a pointer to a result and it's just going to add these two together and then store this in result. Right, so it's a very basic C code, which you could also do in R, yeah, but for this, um, we are just going to take two numbers, add them together and store them in the result. So it's, it is a, it's a function with three parameters, two integers, so whole numbers, and a resulting number, which is also a whole number. Um, and this is the way that you do it in, in C. Um, and I'm not gonna teach you how to program in C, but if you are, capable in programming in C, then you kind of know that here we dereference the pointer of A plus the dereference of the pointer of B, and then we store this into the position which is pointed to by the result point. Uh, but that's just a little bit C code. Then of course we have to create an R file, so we create an R file called R slash call test C from R dot R. Again, we add a header we of course have this function saying, so the function is called call test C from R, which is a function. It takes two name or two parameters as input, A and B. So the numbers that we want to add up, it has an internal variable called results, where we are going to store the result of the computation. And then calling C code in R from your own package is as easy as just doing dot C specify the name of the function, so the name of the R function, so in this case it's R underscore add, which is slightly, yeah, so it's, which is similar to the, to the name of the C function. And then I'm going to say, well, this R underscore add function takes three parameters. It takes A, so as integer A, as integer B, and then it takes something called result, which is as integer result. So I just couple the two input parameters from the R function to the two input parameters of the, um, of the C function, and I'm coupling the, the result internal parameter in R to the input parameter of the C code. So this calls the C code and it returns the result. So it returns the whole result, which will contain A and B and the resulting value. Uh, of course, we have to add a manual file for this function because every our function needs to have a manual file. So we have to now also update the namespace file because we need to export this function to the user. But we also have to use, uh, we have to add this use dinlib function because we are now using our own dynamic library, right? Because we have C code, which gets compiled, which then gets distributed with our package so we need to inform the package that when it starts up it needs to load this your package name.dll which is automatically compiled by R when the package is, is made. So the use dinlib function here loads this dynamic library so the library containing the C code or the Fortran code or the C++ code and of course the export because we now have a second function that we want to offer to the user we need to export or expose this call test C from R to the user of our package. We create a manual file. So in this case, the manual file is a little bit different than the one that we had, because now if we look at the usage section, we have to specify that there are two parameters that the user needs to provide, right? The user needs to provide an A and a B parameter. So in the arguments here, we also need to specify that we have two items. So the first item is item A, which is the first number to add up. And then we have an item B, which is the second number to add up. And of course, the value here would be, um, we can update that as well, because the value is the return value, and the return value is the sum of A plus B, done using C code. Of course, we now test the package again. So we do RCMD check. And this should not throw any errors, notes, or warnings. Um, and then we do RCMD install. This should install the package. Make sure that your auto, that, that the R window is closed. 
you should never install a package while you have the R window open in R, in R because then it won't be able to override the DLL so the, the C code or the R code right because it needs to override it so when you do RCMD install make sure that you have no R windows open and now we can see if our new code works so we do library your package name and then we say call test C from R 5 comma 10 and then it will return this so it will return the two input parameters plus the result which is computed in C all right so some common mistakes when building R packages when you install a package make sure that R is not running because the code might not update and that is because co uh, the file might be in use or R might have locked the file when you loaded the library um, so it, you should always make sure that when you install a package from the command line to make sure that all our windows are closed always check your package before installing because if you don't run rcmd check then you cannot see if there's anything wrong and then when you do rcmd install it will try to install it and then the installation will fail but it won't tell you why so the rcmd check will tell you why stuff is failing and make sure to add enough testing in the test folder have used the documentation for quick and simple tests or an example how and how people should use it but if you have code which requires more thorough testing um, then of course you have to use the test directory and you can put in five or ten or a hundred tests in there all right so the created package can be found on Moodle um, not yet but at the end of the day um, so after the lecture finishes I will upload up, I will upload my your package name to Moodle so you can get it from there so you can look at how I made this very simple package although the assignment for today is creating a package so but head so try and create it first based on the slides if that doesn't work just look at the example package on Moodle um, to see how I did it so all right so that's it for this section so we're nicely on time I gained some time by talking a little bit faster um, and it's now 403 so any questions about our packages and um, how you can make them so it's all about structure right things need to be in the correct folder they have to have the correct name sometimes it a file is not allowed to have an extension um, and you can not put a random file somewhere so you're not allowed to just create a temporary file somewhere um, and just give it a name um, because everything is about structure so every file that is in there that is not according to the spe specs of the 600 page document um, will cause your package to be rejected so it, it's it's very diligent work creating an R package but it's rewarding work because hey, from that point on you can submit it to CRAN and people can just do install the packages your package name and then they can install your package from anywhere in the world and use your code um, which is a very good way to not just get citations on the research that you're doing but to also earn citations and like track record or like for your for your career as a scientist so that people can also cite the um, the, the, the code that you made so the, the work that you put in to create the analysis code all right I see no no questions in chat so is everyone still awake like didn't we boil down to kind of a nothing yet like I'm sweating like mad here so everyone still awake no I'm just talking to myself and commander root shout out to commander root for always being here he's one of the bots that monitors channels so he's always there all right Florian's also still here very good Florian awake tired but awake all right very good so like you guys think that you can um, make an R package after this very short introduction uh, let me stop the recording here for the people watching on YouTube and the people watching on Moodle.